What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down a good and bad example of a post-corner route. So we're going to be showing first an example of a post-corner where the wide receiver didn't get any separation, this route got locked up, and we're going to be talking about some of the things he can improve on, and then we're going to compare and contrast this route with a good example of a post-corner where the wide receiver was able to create a lot of separation and make a big play downfield. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it teaches you a few new things, but also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you're on maybe the little bit more advanced side of things, you want improve your skills but you know you are past like the basic stages of your game check out that very first link in the description below for our four-week wide receiver on field workout schedule 2.0 so what it'll be it'll be the same thing four-week schedule with daily drills broken down with sets reps and video examples but on the more advanced side so if you want some more information on that check out that very first link below let's get started with this video so now this post corner route here we're going to break this down from top to bottom from the release all the way to the top of the break now top of the break is i think where we need the most work, but off the line, there are a couple things that can set you up with this. So when you run a post corner, one of the common questions we get asked is, uh, should I take an inside release or should I take an outside release? And it's the same thing as every other route, whether it's a 10 yard out, a corner, it, the release is based off of the DB. It is not based off of the route that we have. You have to be comfortable running a post corner with an inside release and an outside release. It's just all about what you do on your stem. And what, what, obviously what you do with your release, what you do on the stem, and how you sell at the top of the break. So when this wide receiver comes off, he does the right thing. If you got an inside shade DB, you want to attack his leverage inside. You want to try to get him to hold the leverage. Then take what he gives you. Don't force the inside release because if you force the inside release on a post corner, this DB will not give up the inside. So you're either going to get rerouted across the field or you're not going to be able to get off the jam. So take what he gives you. We get separation by selling our route at the top of the break. Now, when he goes up into this route when he comes off of this release you see how he's very tall with his upper half I think on this move when you guys try to almost like like when you work a move to this DB to the inside and you take an outside release you gotta get skinny and what I mean by that is you need to dip that left shoulder or get back into this DB and almost be hip to hip with him so you have plenty of space to the outside to run or you can restack. But when you guys come off this release and you guys stay super tall and you kind of run away from the DB, that space right there gives him time to recover. So we have to be tight and we have to be hip to hip with him. So now that could have set him up to be in a better position at the top of the route, not to this spot where he's almost hip to hip with this guy. But still got to be able to get separation. We still have to be able to sell the route because sometimes realistically, we may be in a spot like this if the DB plays it well. So one of the things you don't want to do on a post corner is round your upper half and give away the route. So a lot of people think on a post corner, obviously you break off of this outside foot here and then it's three steps to the post. So you're breaking off the right foot. It would be left, right, and then left. So on that left, right, left, a lot of guys think it is just about the eyes. So they'll peek back to the QB, but their upper body, the hips and the shoulders are drifting back towards this break point or towards where they ultimately want to end up on the route. And that gives it away because in man coverage, especially fellas, what is a DB supposed to be looking at? Hips. So he's going to be reading that body language. So this wide receiver, when he breaks, again, he peeks back, his eyes look to the inside. That's his first step, right? That's his second step, third step. He's pretty much gaining some space, but you see how his shoulder and his hip, his right shoulder and his right hip never fully commit to the post. Fellas, if I'm doing a double move, whether it is a sluggo, whether it is an out and up, whatever it is, you have to fully commit that upper half. Because when you turn your hips and your shoulders, everything about that looks like a post. When you're running in that right shoulder, that right hip is drifting upfield, that does not look like a post, and that looks like that you are trying to run a double move. And you see how he's almost turning with that upper body before the cut gets down. On a double move, fellas, that third step has to be the step that changes direction for you. The foot changing direction happens before the upper body starts to turn out of there and run. So let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Again, not bad in terms of the release. In terms of the route concept, he got it right. There are just some things he could clean up. Be tighter with the restack, and let's sell that post a little bit harder. Let's play this thing full speed again. Now we're going to get into a route from Devontae Adams showing the right way to sell a post corner at the top of the break. So this is like more of an inside release post corner, um, but the same principles apply, and um, Adams almost kind of gets him in the exact same position that um, the last receiver did in terms of like being 
on his back hip, if you will. So I'm um, not too worried about like that it's an inside release or an outside release. It's the same concept when it comes to selling the break. So let's play this thing full speed. So Adams, when he breaks to this post, I want you to see how he's fully committed with his upper half. And you notice how the cut is a little bit more sudden for him. That break point on that third step, he breaks here, one, two, three. You see how that's a hard cut. Now, if you're a wide receiver and you want to make more explosive cuts, you hear me talk about like, hey, you want to be sudden with your feet. You hear other people say that, oh, you want to cut hard at the top of the break. You want to get out in one step. A great way to do that is focus on committing your upper body to a break. Because if you could commit your upper body to a break, the way you change direction is not going to be with the hips and shoulders. You're not going to round if you're thinking about it. Your feet get you out of the route. So the feet naturally have to be a little bit more explosive and a little bit more sudden, which is what will help you get that you know explosive cut that we're looking for. So when Adams comes off this thing, you see it's more than just the eyes. See, a lot of people think that it's just about the eyes. But again, there are three things that tie into every double move. You got to have speed and take long strides. You have to sell with your eyes. That's like the icing on the cake. But number one thing you have to do is the hips and the shoulders. Your body language has to sell post. So on a post corner, fellas, do not be that guy that is giving the route away, that's turning the body before the third step gets down, that's rounding into the break, that's already turned even while they're running down the stem of the post. Commit fully, run hard, and run in full stride. Shoot those eyes back. That is just icing on the cake. You see guys all the time. I, I use this example and then I'll send you off on your way. Guys will get separation if they commit their upper body and run hard, but they don't use your eyes. Guys won't get separation if they take choppy steps around their body, but they still sell with their eyes. So what's more important? The body selling the route is the most important thing. Let's play this thing back again one more time. That's a great example of what you guys should be doing on a post corner and how you can sell that route efficiently and be able to get as much separation as possible. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. I always appreciate the feedback from you guys. It's always great to hear from you. Um, you help keep this channel rolling, so we uh, always appreciate it, you guys. And again, if you guys would like a four-week on-field workout schedule for wide receivers with over 100-plus drills, sets, reps on the more advanced side, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.